This is the best case scenario for the Chicago Bulls. We're going to be talking about the recent injury update around Lonzo Ball and Jalen Smith. We're also going to be previewing some things to look forward to in tonight's game against the Orlando Magic. This is your host, Rico Greenhow, and you have found yourself on another episode of Bulls Digest. And so we're going to jump straight into the hot news around Lonzo Ball. This came out last night that Lonzo Ball is set to miss some time as he has a right wrist sprain and it looks like that he is going to be evaluated after 10 days and so let's start there so after those 10 days there is the possibility that uh, Lonzo Ball might have to miss some more time hopefully not uh, you can definitely tell that this uh, medical staff is really going to make sure that they take their time with Lonzo Ball making sure that uh, he is absolutely okay I talked about the fact that they want to make sure that he's able to continue his career for the long term this is about more than just this year with the Chicago Bulls and you know with these 10 days he's looking at probably missing maybe around five to six games that is the possibility um, hopefully he is able to go you know after those 10 days but you know there was a little bit more that came out today as Lonzo Ball opened up about this injury and this is something that uh, I found pretty interesting this is from an ESPN insider and writer um, Ramona Shelburne and she talks about the severity of this injury if Lonzo Ball were to have continued to play because it looks like that he is in between a, a grade one and a two sprain and if he would have kept playing with this wrist injury there was the possibility that uh, it could have turned into a, a, a grade three, which might have actually needed surgery. So this is the best case scenario for the Chicago Bulls to go ahead and shut down Lonzo Ball. One of the things he talked about is that he just didn't feel um, you know, right when he was shooting the ball out there in Memphis. And he just kind of played through it, thought it wasn't a big deal. He still thinks it's not going to be that big of an issue. Clearly, you see that uh, after the MRI, he's right in between those grades. But it looks like he should be fine as long as he's able to go ahead and take that rest and recover. So best case scenario in this standpoint for the Chicago Bulls. And that leads us into the next injury, and that is around Jalen Smith. And so Jalen Smith... Uh, he had the twisted ankle, um, and it looks like uh, essentially with him, he's going to be a game time decision. From what I'm reading, it's very iffy. And I just think that with Jalen Smith and Lonzo Ball, it's for sure going to open up some minutes for this uh, for this roster, especially on the bench. And I think that with Jalen Smith, if he's not available, I'm thinking that, uh, yes, they hit on the points of Julian Phillips, Daylon Terry, Modest Buzelis, but I'd like to see a little bit of uh, Adama Sanogo. And so I've you know, talked about how Billy Donovan is really, really uh, believing in Adama Sanogo uh, going into the season. He talked about the fact that he does feel like he is ready. And I think now that this this is the moment that you go ahead and you uh, give Adama Sanogo a chance, because I think that, yes, you're probably going to take a little bit of a hit as far as your playing style. But what he's going to bring on the defensive end, what he's going to bring as far as getting rebounds and things like that and just being assertive, I think that, uh, you know, that could be a huge boost and it could be something that the Chicago Bulls might need to go to uh, down the line. But like I've said before, this season is all about really evaluating these players and really just seeing where they are in the process. And this is this is huge for the Chicago Bulls because you don't have Lonzo out there, which means that Ayo DeSumo is probably going to have to take um, a bigger role coming off the bench. I talked about the fact that he is right behind Lonzo with that uh, turnover to assist ratio. Those are the top two on the team. And so I think that this is something that's huge for Ayo because if Lonzo is, you know, if he's not there next year or if he is traded, this might be um, Ayo DeSumo's role. I mean, because there is no guarantee that he gets back into the starting lineup. And, you know, with Billy Donovan here, maybe he feels like that is going to be the best, uh, you know, thing for this team is to continue to have him coming off the bench. And I've said this before. I think that Ayo DeSumo, like a Kobe White, they've really been able to adapt uh, to any role that you've thrown at them. And I really do believe he could excel in this role. And I think it is a chance for him to really step into a little bit more leadership. So the best 
bench is absolutely going to be critical tonight. And I know it's unfortunate for these injuries, but uh, it is going to be something that uh, it could help the Chicago Bulls as they continue to build out this team because you really have got to find out what you have as you continue to build out this roster because I talked about the way the Orlando Magic have built up their team. They've done it uh, via the draft, but they've also gotten these players experience. They, they put them in the situations to grow, and this is what this is all about. And Billy Donovan talks about these rotations and then having to trust the young players. Well, he's really going to have to do that tonight. And so as we push forward and we look at this game, you know, these are a couple key players to absolutely look forward to seeing tonight. Um, clearly, we know what uh, Zach Levine has been able to do from a, a scoring standpoint hopefully he is still able to cut down the turnovers I think that that has really been the issue for him I talked about Vooch and how well he is shooting the ball right now you know at this point uh, you know he's at uh, the best clip in his career over the first uh, four games as far as shooting the three-point shot so he's really got it going and Josh Giddy, one of the plays that stood out to me in that last game was the inbounds pass that he had to Zach Levine it was perfect Perfect. They were on the same page. I think you're going to see a lot more of that as Josh Giddy continues to get comfortable, uh, really just running the show here with the Chicago Bulls in that starting lineup. And so on the flip side of this thing, you know, when we look at uh, Ben Carroll, we know what he can do. But I think besides him, there is a couple of other players that I'm looking forward to seeing in this game as we look at the projected starting lineups. And that is going to be uh, Jalen Suggs. I I'm really looking forward to seeing Jalen Suggs. Um, he reminds me a lot of Avery Bradley. That was a two-way player that uh, used to play for the Boston Celtics. And there was a lot of, uh, you know, kind of questions about him getting this contract and just the fact that he wasn't a big scorer. But look, he's almost up to about 17 points a game. Uh, talked about the uh, the way that he's able to defend. I think he's only going to get better there. And I thought he was going to be trending more towards just being a, a solid defender. Uh, and that's about it. But it looks like that he is trending towards being really a good two-way player. And I think that this is what you want to, to really look at when you're looking at developing these players and things like that because when he first came out of Gonzaga uh, it didn't look very good it looked like maybe it might be a bust but I love the way that he's worked at uh, his craft he's gotten better each year he's focused on one side of the ball which is the defense and the offense has come along and I love the way that they have continued to build this team out so that is a player that I'm absolutely looking forward to see um, for the Orlando Magic when it comes down to the Chicago Bulls you know with Lonzo Ball being out um, I, I want to see a little bit more from Kobe White as far as just being a distributor. I talked about the fact that he is right behind Josh Giddy at 4.8 assists on the team, but I think that we are going to see a, a little bit more of an effort from uh, Josh, or not Josh Giddy, but from Kobe White to now uh, help out Josh Giddy as far as uh, helping to really set the table and make these shots a lot easier for this team. Uh, you know, Kobe White might be mixed in there with some of the bench unit as well uh, to kind kind of help for the fact that uh, Lonzo Ball is not going to be there. And I think defensively, you're going to see something from Kobe White as well. I think I saw something where somebody's saying, well, he's just, he doesn't play defense and that's not the truth. I mean, he's not uh, particularly a great defender, but he absolutely competes out there. And in fact, uh, he leads the team in steals at 1.5 steals. And he had a game already this season where he had four. So, you know, Kobe White certainly can help this team, especially the starting team by getting into the passing lane because they're going to have to be active on the defensive end and they're going to have to make sure that uh, yes they are moving the ball so they can generate some good three-point shots which we know they are going to take but hopefully you know if the three-pointer is not there because you are moving the ball, because you are moving as a player, you're, you're doing the cutting, you're, you're screening for one another, then essentially, hopefully, we get some easier baskets. And I would think that if we use a player like Adama Sonogo or THT, which just came to mind, these are players that uh, you know could play a little bit of bully ball for us. And we might need that tonight against this Magic team. Because remember, they took the Cleveland Cavaliers to seven. They've gotten better uh, defensively 
didn't even talk about KCP, who, who's over there for the Orlando Magic. He's not going to be a huge scorer uh, just yet. I know he can be, but defensively, I think that that's what they brought him over for. So anyway, let me know in the comments what you think about these uh, injury updates around Jalen Smith and Lonzo Ball. And also, too, you know, what are some of the key takeaways for you as we get ready to uh, uh, for this game tonight against the Orlando Magic? And so before we jump out of here, I just want to thank everybody out there for just, uh, you know, liking, subscribing, watching the content. It means a lot to us here at Bulls Digest as we try to reach up. Uh, you know, just a, a small goal of reaching to 5,000 subscribers before the NBA season ends. And uh, just want to let you know to keep uh, mashing on that subscribe button for me as about 64.2% of you that watch are not subscribed. So make sure you hit that subscribe. And look, I know that we're going to have a lot of questions after this game, no matter what. Uh, this is uh, just what it is for this Chicago Bulls team until we continue to build out this team and get it to where it needs to go. I'm still saying go Bulls and uh, I'll see you on the back half at the post game. All right, peace.